Ah, that would do, folks. Welcome to the 5 numbers after the name. You will see the Freestyle Friday. It's about time I give you the damn games beaten over here. Resident Evil 7. I probably beat it a couple weeks ago, man. And, and I actually, you know, I kind of tune it in. Sometimes I, I'll push up the program. Sometimes I'll push it back, you know. Uh, oftentimes, I'm not really too concerned with release dates, anything like that. This isn't a channel where I'm, like, on the money. I try to get things out recently and as they're popular and whatnot. But I'm also not tripping about it. So when I saw Resident Evil 7, I beat it like a couple weeks ago. And I was like, you know what, maybe I could get it out there real quick. Da -da -da, even if I put out before the Syndicate video and all that stuff. And then I kind of sat back and I was like, I need some time to reflect on what, what just happened here. Like, I need some time. So I wanted to get myself some time to digest and reflect on this. Unfortunately, though, I'm not giving you the last boss. This is kind of the last boss to swing you in the Baker house. This is Papa Baker again. Uh, third time, I guess, round three that we're putting him on the channel. Um, which seems a lot more of a Resident Evil 5 type boss battle, honestly, or, you know, even a classic Resident Evil type boss battle, uh, which is something I want to talk about a little bit in this video. Uh, but unfortunately, the final, final, final boss, um, which I don't know if I want to say it was underwhelming because I was kind of into the moment, so I think it was cool. Uh, that footage got corrupted on me. I, 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 could, I could view it, but I can't edit it. It's a little bit strange. Um, so uh, I'm throwing up this footage over here instead. Either way, though, which is cool, you know, it's a little bit less spoilery, I guess, if you're into that kind of stuff. What Resident Evil 7 does so well to me is they... they they echoed it and they sold it to us as a completely new type of thing, right? Like, to go back to the beginning, the kitchen demo, uh, it, it, nothing seems like Resident Evil in it, right? There's nothing in Resident Evil. I think at the end, like, some people found that you could, like, hack it and get, like, a shotgun or something like that, just to kind of see it, I believe. Um, and then they released the hour-long, like, kind of demo. Uh, I forget exactly what the name of that was, but kind of the, the, the opening... Um, the opening uh, beginning to the mansion, even though I think it was a mansion, kind of a side house thing. Uh, I didn't even play that because I was already sold by the kitchen demo and I was like, nope, sold, done, don't need it. Uh, and I went into media blackout mode. I was like, I'm all in because this is something completely different. And you play Resident Evil 7 and, and it's really split into a bunch of different parts, right? And this video example right here, this is the end of the mansion part or what I would qualify, which in turn has a bunch of different parts to it and stuff. But the first... Like two, I think I beat the game in eight hours, nine hours. The first two hours, maybe two and a half, three hours. It's it's such an illusion, a facade. Like it, it is so far from anything we know as Resident Evil, and is so different from anything we know as Resident Evil that I was enjoying it. I really liked it, and I was like, this is cool. Like whatever, this is this is what's up. But in my mind, I was thinking. This is, this right now seems like they just put the Resident Evil 7 name on it to sell a little bit more, to be a little bit more, uh, you know, noteworthy rather than a new IP, because this, this feels new. And then slowly they started introducing some Resident Evil stuff to you, right? They started introducing the, the green herbs. They started introducing some ammunition. You, you get an inventory, and you start noticing, oh, I can only carry a certain amount of things. There's an item box. There's a place where you save. Uh, there's a light crafting, you know, kind of like it's been in Resident Evil 4 and whatnot, or even the original Resident Evil used to uh, put herbs, but very, very light crafting. Um, there's puzzles, and literally some of them are the same. When I saw, and this was when it kind of hit me, this was probably about an hour and a half, two hours in. Uh, depending on how slow you want to play it. I took my sweet time. Uh, the, the shotgun puzzle, where you first see the sh shotgun, which is eerily similar to Resident Evil 1's, you know, shotgun puzzle, where, like, immediately I saw it, and I was like, oh, that's right. Like, and especially since I played Remake, uh, like, last year, I think, or something like that. It's, it's on the channel, one of those videos, one of the first games being I ever put on was Remake. I, it, it was still fresh in my mind, where I was like, oh, that's right, I see the shotgun there. I probably got to get a fake shotgun, put it in there. Gotcha. Know exactly what's going on. It starts seeping in these Resident Evil things into you. And then as you keep progressing to the game, there's new stuff, right? Like uh, the, the, the son here, he's got like this whole section with traps and whatnot. Real cool, really dope. Uh, it, it's kind of like Resident Evil puzzles, but like to a whole nother level. That's kind of how I treated that. So that was like really cool. But then, you know, you're managing ammo. There is towards the end a little bit more of a section that could even remind me of a Resident Evil 5-ish, you know, where there's, you just shoot a lot of people and whatnot. Uh, and I, I didn't care as much for that part of the game, but you know, after this you kind of go on to a, a, a ship and that part kind of takes you back to what the new Resident Evil experience is like in this game. Uh, and then you kind of go back to like an older Resident Evil. It's really blending in a bunch of different things. And at the end they kind of hit you with tying it all back in. And the story kind of ties all the way back into uh, what could be Umbrella. And what could be some character that we might know from the past. And I don't want to get too spoiled over here in the video. Uh, but it, it does tie you back into a greater overarching arch of Resident Evil. 
madness that we're used to, right? Because if you go and look at it, the Resident Evil 7 story, or the Resident Evil story in general, is just out of control for, for the most part. I mean, you try to piece it together, and good luck with you. And there's even some minor, minor, minor nods throughout the mansion that I really liked. One of my favorite things I saw early on, it's about an hour and a half in when you're in the mansion for the first time, I saw a picture of the Arclay Mountains, and I literally, there's no reason why they should have that, like in your random house. Like, no reason at all. Uh, but they had it, you know, and, and overall, I'm going to give this game a 9 out of 10. It, it's a very flawed game. Like, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be worked on, needs to be improved. You know, my, my biggest negative, uh, by far, I guess two, two, two big negatives. Uh, the gunplay. The gunplay to me felt pretty weak, in particular the pistol play. Uh, in particular since, you know, the, uh, I go and I look at the, the Red 4, I think it was called, the one in Resident Evil 4. Uh, the red, uh, red nine, maybe it was called. I can't remember exact name, but you know what I'm talking about. The real dope pistol over there, like that thing was on the money. And in this game, it, it's just not like that. It, it, it was a little bit difficult to kind of picture where I was aiming and where I wasn't. The shotgun kind of cures all that um, because of its very nature. But the pistol play, which is something I use for the most part, a uh, little bit weak in this, and the gunplay in general a little bit weak. Uh, which I guess you could sell me on the fact that Ethan, the main character, isn't a cow or anything, you know, blah blah blah, all that stuff. He should be feeling it. You could sell me on that kind of stuff. That's the same argument that, like, I hear uh, with um, The Last Guardian, where, like, Trickle doesn't listen to you because he's, like, a, a real big. And I'm like, hey, that's cool. I prefer if he wasn't, and we, it actually just worked. So, same over here. You could sell me on that, but I prefer if, like, what I'm aiming at is what I actually hit. Uh, the, the other negative to me was the blood on the screen, right? Uh, it, to let you know how hurt you are, there's blood that shows up on the screen. You kind of see it here on the side, and it just stays there. And to me, that was that was not acceptable. I don't need it to, to be re regenerating health. That's not a Resident Evil thing, nor should it be. I, I think it's perfectly fine. I think it answers survival hard to keep your health on. But how about you keep – and I, I love the HUD. Keep the HUD clean, perfect, nothing. But either you give me something uh, – like there's a little like a, a watch that you could see. Like, why can't I just look at that? Maybe you give me a button where I can look at that. Put the responsibility on me to know my health, how it used to be, um, rather than having it just thrown on the screen. And in all fairness, it just kind of makes things look ugly. Like, that black, that spot is over there. And there's actually a setting where you could reduce it, but not eliminate it. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, just, just give me the option. Give me the option. I, I kind of expect at some point that will be patched in, right, to just eliminate it altogether. So those were kind of my big negatives. But I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. I'm very excited to see what a Resident Evil 8 looks like. Does it keep progressing through this? Do we keep advancing Ethan's storyline? Is there a whole new character together? How about the DLC? What's that going to be like? Resident Evil is back, baby. Games beat. 